I love dancing. I think that's obvious. <laughs> uh, my name is Sepp, and it's a pleasure to be here. And I would like to know if you love dancing. You like dancing? That's, that's, that's pretty good, actually. <laughs> let's make sure next time everybody does that. <laughs> or not, because I don't care. Uh, let's test. Let's see if it's true. Uh, can we have some music, please? Let's see. <laughs> Hey Gint, what's up? Come on, I'm back. Come on, it's called the back beat. Oh, you're good. Come on. Get up on that thing and dance with you. You better get up on that thing and dance with you. That works. You know what? Come on, everybody, get up. Come on, get up and dance with you. You better. Oh yeah, come on. Surprised. You had good warm ups before me, so that's cool. But still, it's difficult. I'm asking you something, and most of you are like, oh. it's, it's hard. And how many of you actually go out there doing that every day, wherever you want? You had some beautiful examples about singing or not singing, or it was really nice, similar explanations. It's super cool to refer to that one. To dance or not to dance. Why is it so hard to go out there and dance, not care? Wriggle your body and feel the beat. Why? Many reasons. Many reasons. Let's um, imagine some stuff. Let's imagine we go somewhere where there's music, because we need some music to dance to. We prefer at least. Uh, we start at home. Do you want to dress up? Look sharp to make sure you look good. Makes you feel comfortable, hopefully. You go to a place where you see your friends. You take a spot somewhere at the table or at the bar. Talk. Have a drink. There's some music. So you feel like, mm, nice, nice music, you talk, it was a long week, weekend starts. But you're not going to go out and dance straight away. Nobody does that, almost nobody. Two hours later, you get into the mood, the place gets a bit more full, you're not sitting anymore, you're standing up. And the music is great, there's a band playing, there's a DJ playing. And you feel like, oh yeah, nice. I feel it, but I'm the only one. Maybe there's some other people feeling it, but I'm not going to go out there and dance. I don't want to be looked at. I, I, I don't want to be judged for being crazy or something. Two hours later, drinks are poured, people get relaxed, and it's a real popular place, so it's packed, full of people. So you start to dance, because you're not alone. Yeah. So you feel comfortable, so you're grooving a bit like this. Keep on talking, of course, you're just not here for dancing. Have another drink, like, yeah. That kind of stuff, if you're uncomfortable, there's variations. Because you know that step, like, are you taught about, yeah, right. Nobody's going full on, or maybe except for the one weird person that doesn't seem to care and that's going really crazy already, but okay. Another two hours later, it's super hot in the place. Everybody goes wild, which for when I mostly go to places, what I observe going wild is like, or maybe uh, when there's a drop or something, or maybe a break in the band, and maybe the band asks, can you sing along? Then maybe we put our hands up, or then maybe we do some more crazy stuff. Do you recognize this situation? <laughs> OK. It's what I see. I'm very lucky to travel around the world, around Belgium, or when my free time, I go to places where there's music, and I observe this so often. It's like, yeah, yeah, I like it. I want it. Mm. Because I believe everybody likes to dance. I really believe we are all dancers inside. We're born with a heartbeat. We breathe, which is a groove. When we can't sleep, mom says, I'll, I'll dance you and to sleep. We're dancing when we're little small human beings. I believe we have that, and over time we lose the capacity to feel free and dance. Or we just learn new stuff that makes us go here. So we question ourselves, we do little self-evaluations, we compare ourselves to others. But dancing is beautiful. The crazy thing is, I'm also I'm lucky to go around the world to work with dancers. People that go out somewhere and they're like, I'm a dancer. And they go somewhere. 
they mostly it's like workshops or incentives or dance festivals. During the day, they take classes. Often, I'm there to teach the classes, which is super great. It's also very ironic to teach people how to dance, but I do it still. So make, I have to make my living. Um, what I see is very fascinating because people say, no, I'm a dancer. And they have a lot of very similar barriers or thresholds. So what happens? When in class, it, it works pretty fine, but in the interaction in class, I feel so often very similar barriers. Am I good enough? Mm, this kind of behavior. At night, there's a party in many of these festivals or uh, workshops. So that means there's a band playing, there's a DJ, and people really go there to have fun. That's also why often they learn to dance, because they want to have fun at night. I'm there, too, to have fun. At night, sometimes I'm off, so I want to dance, too. So you go on the floor and you dance. Often I also ask somebody to dance, because I like partner dancing. So it's a social dance environment, which means like tango, or salsa, or folk dance. Uh, in my case, it's swing dances, like Lindy Hop, or Shaq, or Balboa, Charleston. Old swing dances, that's what I like a lot. I like all dances, by the way. But and when I ask somebody, sometimes they, rec they know who I am. Oh, you're one of the teachers. And they're like, they're like, yeah, but I'm a beginner. I didn't ask you. You're, I just want to dance. And you want to dance too, right? But it just starts from that first moment. Often they don't say anything. You start dancing and you just feel like people being nervous, uncomfortable. Why? Because they're here. Uh, am I good enough? Will I remember the steps? Maybe I just learned them or somebody else. Do I execute well? Is my rhythm good? Do I actually smell OK? Do I look good? All of these questions. Is my connection good enough to partner dance and connect with you? So often, even in these very pure dance environments, people are so inhibited. They have so much limits and barriers. So they're executing dancing, but maybe not dancing. This observation uh, maybe goes rather for a Western environment, I would say. Um, environments where we're very result-orientated, which means often we do things to be good, to be uh, performative. Um, maybe in some other kind of cultures, it's more about not caring, being in the moment. This process works better. So let's say I'm making an observation about Western world. But what's so absurd is that we all love and like dancing, just like singing, for instance. But we don't go there that often. Why? Let's imagine the other. I want to give a couple of examples why we love dancing, and, and I think there's a couple of reasons why we love it so much. Think about kids. Put on some music wherever in the world. Kids dance to it. Almost all the kids dance to it. The younger, the better, because they don't know anything. They have only music. It goes in, and they, even babies sometimes, they're like, yeah. <laughs> million YouTube videos with that. So why do we like that? Because they're playful. They don't have any limits, and they just move to the music the way they are. Think about an adult couple that's on the floor somewhere. There's music. They're holding each other, and they're watching each other in the eyes. They're in love, maybe, or they're just having a flirt, and they draw on each other's eyes. We like to see that. Why? It's because they connect. They share something. When you're in love or flirting, you don't see what's going around you. And maybe that's also why you forget all these things, and maybe dance slowly slay your partner and just be happy there, moving to the music together on top of all of that, or maybe separate. Think about your grandparents. A lot of you are locals, and you know that a lot of our grandparents were dancing a lot back in the day. So when you go to a marriage or something, or maybe some kind of intergenerational party, you would see your grandparents dance, and you would say, wow, that's nice. They're moving to the music. They're maybe a bit older, so it's not super spectacular, but they move to it. They know how to do these crazy figures or whatever, and they don't care. They've been doing that for maybe 70 years. We like to see that because we see their connection, their relationship, their history. We can see them enjoying that moment, the music and themselves and each other. You recognize that? And maybe you recognize this one. It's these very exceptional moments when you're somewhere in a bar, on the streets, in a club, in a festival, a place where in some kind of way it was the right night with the right atmosphere, with the right people, with the best music and the amazing experience. And you watch around you and you feel like everybody has the same kind of feeling and the whole place goes nuts. And everybody's shouting and dancing alone or with each other like crazy. It happens maybe sometimes, or it did happen maybe sometimes in your life. 
Why do we enjoy that? Because we feel connected to all these people, because we felt free that night, because we experienced all these beautiful emotions we had in that moment. But they're rather rare. This contrast between mm, being here and think about self-evaluate versus being here, just letting go, is huge. And with these little stories, I truly hope that we can see a little bit more that we create or we have been given all these barriers to go out and dance and you can get rid of them. So we can maybe, again, connect more with ourselves, our bodies, being in the moment and not caring. Maybe connecting with our people while dancing and enjoying the music. Maybe connecting with the musicians or with the DJ or all the people around you and just not caring soaking up that music and the great vibes around you and just dance. <laughs> to dance or not to dance. Thank you. <laughs>